Breath of Life presents Experience the Power with Walter L. Pearson, Jr. Join us now as Pastor Pearson continues his message entitled, Putting on Christ. This is, this is Saul having just come from that Damascus Road experience. I can't even touch it because if I do, the clock will hate me. Could I do a little Reader's Digest moment? Do you know what Saul saw in that light? Well, you ought to know if you read it. He looked into the light, was blinded, but for the first time he could see. Huh? And he heard a voice talking out of the light. Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? And he says, who art thou, Lord? <laughs> Reason why some of us ought to empathize with that is because the way God had to get our attention was with something supernormal. There were a few of us who were not about to naturally go to a religious situation. And you know something? I, I want to say this again. I hope you know, I had a few people who I was talking to very personally when we started, and I, I, I pray God that you're still there. Because what I want to say to you is that you don't have to be perfect for him to intercept you. You know, Saul was out hurting Christians. Saul was bringing pain to people who did, who did things in the name of Jesus. You would have thought, if there was anybody who Jesus didn't care about, it would have been Saul. But Jesus can look past your faults. <laughs> Jesus knows you better than your mother, your father, your sister, your brother. Jesus knows you better than your spouse. In fact, he knows you better than yourself and he can brush aside all of those things that everybody else focuses on and get down to what you could be if he could just get you to let him work on you you know they, they say that violins are are carefully and skillfully crafted but you will never know what a violin can do until you put it in the hand of a master violinist. So maybe the problem in your life has been you've never run into a master musician. So everybody thinks that you are average. I dare you to let Jesus pick you up. I dare you to let Jesus get his hands on you. You can brush off the dust, know who you are by the feel. Doesn't have to see a name on you. Because in fact, when he found me, I had the wrong name on me. So, so what I want to show you is that in that moment, something happened. In fact, why tarriest thou is what, is what we read here. Why tarriest thou? Look at it, verse 16. And now why tarriest thou? Arise and be baptized and wash away thy sins, calling on the name of the Lord. And when that moment happened, all somebody had to say was, hey, Saul, you got a rough life. But I heard something happen to you on the way here. Uh, do you feel the same? <laughs> he's, he's blind. But they say you need to be baptized. God had given him back his sight in the sequence of time, but he could still see clearly up enough to say, I want to be baptized. Now, included in that moment is more than water. In fact, there must be belief and repentance accompanying this outward act in order for it to be efficacious. 
can't just get wet. That's our challenge. So let's talk about belief. Go to Acts chapter 8. I'm going to stay in Acts for a minute. You can look like a biblical scholar. Acts chapter 8. There you will find an Ethiopian director of the treasury. Would you give me just one moment to feel proud? You know, you don't begrudge me that, do you? Because I see this... Uh, this director of the treasury. I know that if he's from Ethiopia, he has a little style. His chariot is not normal. There were no 22-inch rims in those days, but... <clears throat> Surely the director of treasury had something to identify his chariot. And you remember he was riding along, coming back from Jerusalem, having bought Isaiah in a beautiful wrapped scroll. And he has it open. But let me tell you how much God cares about treasurers of Ethiopia or ordinary people. He sent a deacon turned evangelist down the back row and said, intercept the chariot. I don't know, can you see this or is your, is your imagination gone? So I look from up top now, because God can lift you up and let you look down. I see the chariot on the, on the good highway, and I see the deacon on the back road. The good highway with the beautiful chariot, the dusty road. But this Philip comes and, and approaches the chariot. Don't tell me that somebody didn't say, excuse me, sir. I'm sorry, sir. Do you, did, did he invite you? No, he didn't, but I have an authority that's higher than the treasure. And he goes and says, I want to I talk to you. And the, and, and the amazing thing is that the director of the treasure says, come on, get on. Now, I, I, yes. The problem with some people who claim to represent Jesus is that they get so caught up in the trappings of wealth and power that they forget why Jesus sent them. <laughs> Philip could have easily gotten in the chariot, you know. And this is a nice chariot. Do you ride like this all the time? So. <laughs> this is beautiful. But he, he didn't have time for small talk. He found the man reading about the sacrifice of Jesus. And, 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 and this treasurer says, I don't understand what I'm reading. Is he talking about himself or somebody else? He was wounded for our transgressions. But he got to the place where like a lamb led to the slaughter, Jesus allowed his life to be taken so that Walter Pearson and many others could live. And the Bible says that Philip opened up his mouth. For all of those people who have been a little annoyed that I get carried away from time to time and that my decibel level rises, I will point you to this moment and say that I am covered under Philip. Because the Bible said he opened up his mouth. That does not mean he whispered. He didn't say, yes, I think he's talking about you. Philip forgot where he was. <laughs> he stood up and said, this, this is Jesus. And he died for you. And he died for me. In verse 36, Acts chapter 8, I lost my spot. <laughs> Acts chapter 8, let me tell you what happened after this wonderful exchange. Acts chapter 8, and look at verse 36. And as they went on their way, they came unto a certain water. <laughs> and the eunuch said, see, here is water. 
what doth hinder me to be baptized? Listen to verse 37. And Philip said, If thou believest with all thine heart, thou mayest. And he answered and said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And they commanded the chariot to stop. And this powerful treasury official, the director of the treasury, was baptized because he believed with all his heart. Number one, you got to believe. Do you see it? Well, Acts chapter 2. Told you we'd stay there a minute. Acts chapter 2. Look at verse 38. Acts chapter 2, verse 38. Here's what it says. Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. I got to be calm. I knew this would be a challenge to preach. You must know that before a real change can happen, you need to repent. You need to think differently. Until Christ comes in, we are always covering ourselves, you know, comparing ourselves with others until you see yourself in the clear light of Jesus' love. You don't really know who you are. As long as I'm comparing me with somebody else, I might come to think I'm okay. But when the x-ray light of Jesus' love shines through me, then I see how horrible my life has been and what I want is to repent. I want to change my pattern of thought. So instead of hiding what I've done, I confess it. And I am willing to change the way I think. And then the Bible says, you are baptized for the remission of your sins. Let me do it fast. There are people who I know who are cancer survivors. Praise God for you and your faith. My mom died with cancer, and what we hoped the most was to hear one word, remission. The doctors would talk to me and my brother and my father, and they'd say, we're trying to work to get the cancer in remission. And we prayed for it. God chose not to do it. Don't worry. We're not worried. If you die in Christ, you'll rise again. <laughs> we're okay. But this text says that you are baptized for the remission of your sin. Chemotherapy can get cancer in remission. Huh? You, you can get medications that will do that. They have all kinds of new methods that will get cancer into remission. But nothing. Nothing, nothing can get sins into remission but the blood of Jesus. Before you are baptized, you ought to make sure that you get infused with the blood of Jesus so that your sins can be in remission. And when that happens, then you are ready to be baptized. Now, uh, let me give you one more thing that happens because, you know, Jesus gives you more than you can ask or think. Uh, Acts, amazing. Acts chapter 3, we're still in Acts. Look at verse 19. Acts chapter 3, verse 19. Repent ye therefore and be converted that your sins may be blotted out when the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. Look at, the, look at the first part of that text. This is why I love my job. It says, repent. That's putting you in the active role. Nobody can make you repent. You got to do it. God will not even make you repent. So that's 
in your control. You can say, Lord, help me. I want to think differently. And he can give you the power to do that. But the next phrase, it's, it's amazing. The next phrase says, and be converted. Because you can repent, but you can't convert yourself. A lot of people have tried, you know, willpower. There's not enough willpower in the universe. Only Jesus can convert you. And the Bible says that when you change by his power the pattern of your thoughts, that he can convert you so that your sins can be blotted out. Who in the world can do that? Only Jesus. I want to read something to you that's amazing. Uh, there is a text in the Bible, Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 5. It says, one Lord, one faith, and one baptism. Uh, I, I'm interested in the text because some people are fairly sure that what that means is that if you are ever baptized, no matter what the circumstances, even if nobody got you to the place where you could make an informed decision, informed consent is important. Because until you know what you're deciding, your decision is invalid. So Matthew chapter 28 says, teach. Because if you don't teach, then people can't make an informed decision. But there are some people who think that no matter what I did not know, there's only one Lord, one faith, and one baptism. Let me take you somewhere in Acts. <laughs> I think this is the last one, so enjoy it. Acts chapter 19. I'm going I'm to just read the Bible and see if you see anything with me. Acts chapter 19, starting with verse 1. <clears throat> Let me get in some good light. There are people who have reached an age that is similar to mine. <laughs> you understand that I need good light. It says, and it came to pass, this is Acts chapter 19, and it came to pass that while Apollos was at Corinth, Paul, having passed through the upper coasts, came to Ephesus, and finding certain disciples, he said unto them, Have you received the Holy Ghost since ye believe? And they said unto him, We have not so much as heard whether there be any Holy Ghost. And he said unto them, Unto what then were ye baptized? And they said, Unto John's baptism. Then said Paul, John verily baptized with the baptism of repentance, saying unto the people that they should believe on him which should come after him, that is, on Christ Jesus. When they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Did you see that? I like it because I like the way it sounds. <laughs> Have you received the Holy Ghost since you believe? We haven't even heard whether there be any Holy Ghost. <laughs> so how'd you get baptized? Well, we got baptized under John's baptism. We repented. And when they heard that, recognizing that they had not been sufficiently informed. Pause for effect. They said, baptize us again, because before you make a decision like that, you ought to at least have the basic facts, and certainly the Holy Spirit fits into the basic facts. Tell you why I'm saying that. There are some people under the sound of my voice who were baptized without knowing that the Ten Commandments last forever. There are people listening to me right now. Not your fault. But you were baptized not understanding that there were so many blessings in God's Sabbath. You were baptized thinking that grace made it possible to just forget the rules. And just live any way you wanted to. You didn't understand that Jesus gave you the power through his blood not to forget the rules, but to let him come inside and live a life within you that kept the rules. I'm saying to you tonight, and I say it very carefully, 
Somebody may feel already the need to be informed, sufficiently informed. You can never know everything, but you can get the basics. And you, my sister, my brother, might need to consider being baptized again. Well, how do you, how do you get baptized? We've got to go fast. John chapter 3, verse 23 says that there came a moment when John was baptizing and he went to a place near Enon, John chapter 3 and verse 23, where there was much water there. Matthew chapter 3 and verse 6. You need to turn over there because I got a little experience the power moment that I got to get in. Got one more for you tonight. I hope you see it. Matthew chapter 3 and look at verse 6. Matthew chapter 3 verse 6. And were baptized of him in Jordan, confessing their sins. This word in Greek is baptizo. It means to immerse, like immersing a piece of cloth in dye so that it's completely changed in color. Do you like that one? So when you are baptized according to the word, you are immersed, every part of you, so that there is no spot that stands out. And it also tells you that if you want to be baptized like Jesus, well, follow me here. This is uh, verse 13. Then cometh Jesus from Galilee to Jordan unto John to be baptized of him. But John forbade him, saying, I have need to be baptized of thee, and comest thou to me? And Jesus answering said unto him, Suffer it to be so now, for thus it becometh us to fulfill all righteousness. Then he suffered him. Jesus says, I know you don't think you're worthy to baptize me, and I, I, I come to you sinless. But in order to fulfill righteousness, I need to be baptized. Now stick with me for a minute. I'm going to try to stay calm. And Jesus, when he was baptized, went up straightway out of the water. And lo, the heavens were opened unto him. And he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and lighted upon him. And lo, a voice from heaven saying, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. I got to experience some power here because I've got Jesus coming up out of the water. I've got the Holy Spirit coming down like a dove, lighting on Jesus. And I got God the Father pulling back the separation, talking down a beam of light to say, This is my beloved Son in whom I'm well pleased. Some company thinks they invented fiber optics. The first person to talk down a beam of light was not a phone company. It was God the Father talking on heavenly light beam when Jesus was there and the Holy Spirit was there and God the Father was there, forgive me if I experienced the power of that picture. And then I've got one more thing to share and here it comes. Galatians chapter 3 and verse 27, you looked it up at first. And it said, as many of you as have been baptized in the, into Christ have put on Christ. It's often referred to like putting on clothes. But putting on Christ can't be like putting on clothes because you can change them too fast. I don't have time. In the old days, they say that Greek writers who wanted to say that they were well-versed in the thoughts of great men would say, I have put on Socrates. What they meant was, I know enough Socrates that I can quote it. I have immersed myself in it. I walk Socrates. I talk Socrates. Somebody else would come up and say, I have put on Plato. And so standing for their respective mentors, they would argue, one holding up for Plato and one for Socrates. And what it means is that you have learned so much, that you have imbibed so much of their wisdom that your mind has been changed 
by the power of a great thinker. Tonight, Jesus says, if you've been baptized, you have put me on. Thank you for watching Breath of Life. Join us next time for another exciting message from Pastor Walter L. Pearson, Jr. 2,000 years ago, Jesus did something especially for you. He got up on a cross at Calvary and died. That day, you were on his mind. Our offer this week is Max Lucado's He Did This Just For You. This easy-to-read, entertaining, and inspiring book reveals what God did to win your heart. Let Max Lucado beautifully lay out the way home to our Heavenly Father through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Call today and ask for He Did This Just For You. It's yours for a gift of $5 or more. The toll-free number is 877-BOL-OFFER. That's 877-265-6333. Or you may ask for the book by writing to Breath of Life, Post Office Box 97192, Washington, D.C., 20077. Remember to include your gift of $5 or more. Come up close and personal with the passion and promise of God Almighty in He Did This Just For You. Thank you for watching Breath of Life. Pastor Walter Pearson hopes today's program has been a real blessing to you. To order a CD or audio cassette copy of this broadcast, just call our toll-free number at 1-877-BOL-OFFER. That's 1-877-265-6333. Or you may write to Breath of Life, P.O. Box 97192, Washington, D.C., 20077. The CD or audio cassette is yours for a gift of $5 or more. If you'd like to purchase a DVD or VHS, just let us know and we'll send you an order form with a list of all the Breath of Life programs. Again, our toll-free number is 877-BOL-OFFER, 877-265-6333. Our address is Breath of Life, P.O. Box 97192, Washington, D.C., 20077. Be sure to tell your family and friends about the Breath of Life television ministry. Thank you for your support, and God bless. Breath of Life presents 10 inspiring, timeless messages from well-known evangelist and preacher C.D. Brooks. To order a DVD or VHS, call our toll-free number at 877-BOL-OFFER. That's 877-265-6333. Or you may write and request an order form at Breath of Life, P.O. Box 97192, Washington, D.C., 20077. Thank you for watching and supporting Breath of Life. God bless you.